Welcome to the UDrive U Network. My name is Kenny Long, and on this episode, we are going to talk about QuickBooks and entering factored invoices. In previous videos, I talked about invoicing and I've talked about receiving money, but the way that that's done when you factor an invoice is completely different and requires a lot more steps. So I will talk about how it works, why it works, and then we'll dig into QuickBooks Online and I'll show you how the entries work. So the biggest problem with factored invoicing is how it works and the misconception of what factoring actually is. From an accounting standpoint, factoring is a loan. The factoring company loans money against the invoice. It doesn't matter from an accounting standpoint, it doesn't matter if it is a non-recourse or a recourse program. You have an agreement with your customer whether it's a broker or shipper. For the purposes of this video, we'll just say your customer. So you have an agreement with your customer. You move a load for your customer and that customer owes you money for moving the load. You have an, a, a different agreement, another agreement, separate agreement with your factoring company. They provide a different service. They advance or loan money against your receivables, your invoices, your asset accounts. Your agreement with your factoring company is completely separate from your agreement with your customer. What's important to note is your factoring company does not have any agreement whatsoever with your customer. The only relation they have is you have agreed to allow your customer to pay your factoring company on your behalf. You've allowed your factoring company to receive money on your behalf. So when the factoring company loans you the money, they get paid back, your loan is paid off when they get the check from your customer. But the two do not have an agreement together. That's why it's important in your bookkeeping system, in your accounting and specifically in QuickBooks, which is what I'm uh, encouraging everyone to use, to keep these transactions separated. So how do you do that? Well, in my video that I've done in the past about invoicing, I showed how you create an invoice and you send it to your customer. That process is pretty similar. You still have to create an invoice to show that your customer owes you the money. Then you show that your factoring company has loaned you money. So you create a loan payable in the amount of the invoice. There is no relation between the invoice and the factor. There is no relation between the invoice amount and the factory amount other than it is the same amount because that is the asset that your factor has loaned the money against. But the two are not tied together. They are actually two separate transactions on the books. So you'll create the invoice for your, for your customer and you'll create a loan payable for your factor and then you will hold money in reserve and deduct any fees when they release it to you. So let me talk you through it first, then we'll show it on the, the QuickBooks online to show how it's entered. Let's assume that your factoring company holds 10% in reserve and does a 3% fee and let's say you do a load for $1,000. So you will show the invoice to your customer for $1,000. It doesn't matter if you send the invoice directly to the customer yourself or if you allow your factoring company to do that for you. On your books, you still need to create an invoice to show that you have receivables open from that customer. Then you will show an account payable or a loan payable which is a uh, liability account payable to your factor. The factor will give you the money. You will put that money in your checking account. And to balance that amount in your account, you will create that loan payable account. Then you will create a reserve account, which is an asset account. That is your money. The factor will put some of that money into that reserve account. And so you will show money going into your bank account, money going into a loan payable account, and money going into a reserve account. 
No money goes into your checking account because the factor has already loaned you, advanced you that money. The factor will then release the reserve. You'll deduct the amount of the factoring fees from that reserve account. And then the remainder will go into your checking account. Here we are in the QuickBooks Online dashboard. This is a screen that comes up when you first log into QuickBooks Online. We just did a load for $1,000 and now we need to create an invoice to our customer for $1,000. If you need help on creating invoices, click the link above or in the description and watch my video on invoicing first, and then we can continue on. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna create a quick invoice without a lot of detail, just for the sample. So we're gonna create an invoice to our sample broker, and the terms are net 30. These are the terms you have with your customer, it has nothing to do with your factoring company. We're gonna say that we sent this out on August 1st, which gives us an August 31st due date, and it was a line haul flat rate. I am using a sample account, so it, it, there is no tax on your version. Uh, it will, it, my version may be a little different because I'm using a sample account. Balance due of $1,000, and we will save this, and we will exit out of this and go back to our dashboard. Now, before I started, I created a sample checking account with $0 in it. I haven't created any deposits into this account yet, just to show you how the flow of money works here. You can see that we just created the $1,000 invoice, which is outstanding here. And next, we have to receive the money from the factor. So we're going to go up to new. We're going to create a bank deposit. The customer is not paying us, so we are not receiving a payment. We're creating a bank deposit. So select bank deposit. And this is going to go into our sample checking account, whatever checking account you use. And date, August 1st, this is the date that we created the invoice. The factoring company is kind enough, enough to give us money on the same day. So we're going to receive that from our sample factoring company. This can be whatever your factoring company name is. And it is going into an account that we now need to create. They are giving us a loan, which is a current liability. So select other current liabilities for account type. Detail type is a loan payable. So create an account, other current liabilities under loan payable, and we call it factor loan payable. And for description, we'll just copy and paste and we will call it a factor loan payable there as well. Copy and paste. Save and close. So we have this liability account and they are buying or loaning against the entire amount, $1,000. So they are opening a loan for $1,000 against our invoice. However, the total of $1,000 is not what goes into our bank account. They are going to hold 10% in reserve. So we need to create another account. Add new. This one is other current assets and detail type also other current assets and we will call it factor reserve account and again we will copy and paste save and close this is a negative 100 subtracting $100 from the $1,000. Now, if you understand double entry accounting, the $1,000 is a credit to your liability account, and the $100 as a negative here is actually a debit to your reserve account. So that totals $900. This $900 deposit is what's going into your checking account. So we will save and close this. And now it shows that we have $1,000 of invoices because our customer still owes us $1,000. However, in our checking account, we have $900 cash. If we look at our chart of accounts, we could see our checking account, $900, and our factor reserve account has $100 balance. The factoring company is still holding $100 and our loan payable of $1,000. We actually still owe the factoring company $1,000.
So let's go back to our dashboard. That is all that you need to do on the first day. So now let's say the calendar is ticking by, 30 days goes by, and your customer pays you. Notice I say the customer pays you because they're not paying the factor. They are paying you. They're just sending the check to the factoring company. They are writing a check because you authorize them to pay off your loan. So how do we do that? This is where it gets a little trickier. They owe $1,000. So let's go up here and receive money on that invoice. Receive a payment. Select receive payment. Select that customer, the sample broker. That invoice automatically comes up. It's outstanding. QuickBooks wants to know what you're doing with this money. You're going to deposit too. This is the most important part of this transaction. Undeposited funds. Undeposited funds. Imagine somebody writes a check and hands it to you. That releases their obligation. They have paid you. The check is in your hand, but you have not deposited it into your bank account yet. So the customer paid. That money is held until you clear it in your bank account. So make sure that you deposit it to undeposited funds. We're going to select the invoice of $1,000 and make sure also that you change the payment date to the date that they actually paid. You don't want to miscredit their account. So the date they actually paid, which should come on a report from your factoring company, will say that they paid it on time. Save and close. Now that we received the money from our customer, you can see that we have $1,000 that is not yet deposited. Our bank account still has the $900 that the factoring company applied. And if we go to our chart of accounts, under the factoring accounts, our reserve account still has the $100 that the factoring company is holding, and the loan payable, we still owe the factoring company $1,000. So let's go to bank deposit and deposit the money that's in our undeposited account. Select the A-plus sample broker, the $1,000 that they paid us. QuickBooks is holding onto this. They know that this money is hanging out undeposited. They want to know what you want to do with it. Select that amount, and then select receive from your customer and applied to your factor loan payable. The entire amount was paid into that loan so select a negative $1,000. That shows $0 is being applied to your checking account. However, when you pay the loan, once the factoring company receives this money, they will release the reserve account. So now we can select the reserve, factor reserve, for $100. That's the total of $100 that they are paying us. They are giving our money back. However, once again, they are going to hold their fee. Now in our sample, let's say that their factor fee was 3%. Now it is not 3% of the $100 that they were holding. It was 3% of the entire $1,000 that they funded us. So that's $30. So again, we will create a new account, add new, this is an expense account, and we can call it bank charges, and we can call it factoring fees. And again, we'll just copy and paste for description. Save and close. Factoring fees, and again, this is minus $30. It's an expense which means $70 total will be deposited into our checking account. Save and close. Now we can see from our chart of accounts that our checking account has $900 that they originally deposited plus the $70 that they released to us minus the fees. If we go back to our dashboard, we have $1,000 is now deposited and no overdue invoices. And that's it. That's how you receive money against a factored invoice.